Today, we're looking at using regular expressions in C. Welcome back, everybody. A lot of times, regular expressions are something that you might associate with a higher level interpreted language like Python or Ruby or Perl, but you can use them in your lower level compiled languages like C as well. And so I thought we'd take a look at that today. This video is going to assume that you at least have some idea what regular expressions are. I might need to make a more in depth video that talks about more of the theoretical, you know, conceptualization of what a regular expression is and what its limits and capabilities are. So do let me know down in the discussion if you want me to dig a little deeper into regular expressions in a future video. But for today's purposes, a regular expression is an expression that describes a pattern that can be recognized by a DFA or a deterministic finite automaton. Practically speaking, most often these are expressions that we use in order to validate and parse text in our programs and they're really useful. They can save you a lot of time in your code. Also, speaking of code, this video will contain source code as most of my videos do, and it's all in the video, but if you don't wanna type it all yourself, if you wanna just download it, all source code is available through Patreon, along with monthly office hours and things like that. Also, to those of you who help support this channel, you know who you are, I really appreciate it, thank you. But now, back to regular expressions, so let's look at the code. Okay, so we're gonna start with a simple program. It just has a pretty much empty main, just with a return statement here. Note that I did include regex.h up above. That's gonna be important. And the way I want this program to work is I wanted to take a single argument. So let's add a quick argument check. So we're gonna say if argc is less than, or just say is not equal to two, then let's print out. So print out an error message. So we'll say usage percent s and string to match. Okay, so what I wanna do here is I want to just take a single argument and we're going to then try to match it or parse it, we're gonna do something with it. So this is gonna be a simple example. We run it, we'll take a string. So like for example, and note I have a make file over here as well, which will compile my example code. So if I come down here and compile it and we run example, uh, it'll give me an error here, but let's say that I want to, oh, whoops, not one, zero compile it again. And so if we run it here, it'll say, hey, yeah, you gotta run it like this. And if we want some kind of text here, we can just, you know, whatever. We can put in some text and it would match it when we're all done, but we're not there yet. Okay, so we have this simple args check right here at the beginning to make sure we're calling the program correctly. Okay, so the idea with this program is this, this string, this argument that I'm passing in, is going to have a particular expected format, right? I want it to have a certain structure to it and I'm going to parse it using regular expressions. So we'll get to that in a minute. Let me first just declare a couple of variables here. So first of all, let's have a, you know, the regular expression itself is going to be a regex underscore T. Let's just call it RE. So this is going to be, this is going to represent our regular expression. This is gonna hold on, you know, store it. And then when it comes time to matching, we're going to have a, an array of these reg match underscore T. We'll just call that match and then um, matches. Okay, and I'll get back to how this all works and let's just pound define num matches to be, I'm gonna set it to three right now, I'll explain why in just a second. Okay, now we need to think about what structure do we want this thing that we're passing in, this, this regular expression, what, what kind of structure do we want our input to have? Okay, now for this example, I'm gonna do something simple. I just want my strings to be, you know, key value pairs. So something like key equals value, or name equals Jacob, something like this. So you have you have a, a key, you know, or a variable name, and then equals, and then its value, right? So something like that. And so I would like any string that has this structure, you know, word basically, you know, identifier equals identifier, I want that to be considered valid, and I also want to be able to parse these pieces out. Okay, so how do we represent this as a regular expression? Well, let's just make, a variable that's going to hold the string, the pattern we want. So we'll just call it pattern. And then it's just gonna be a string. Now I want 
the match to basically match the entire string. Like no squishiness on each end. So we're going to add a caret to the beginning. That's going to match the beginning of the string and the dollar sign that is going to match the end of the string. Okay, so this means whatever gets passed in, the whole thing has to match my pattern. Okay, so now what about the key? Well, the key is going to Let's say we just want it to be letters, right? So no digits, just letters here. So let's say, so what I can do is put the square brackets and uh, say I want anything from A to Z or capital A to capital Z. So basically anything from A to Z. And then I have a plus sign that means like one or more of these letters. Okay, so one or more letters followed by an equal sign followed by, let's do basically the same thing afterwards. Only let's let the value also have uh, digits, and let's also let it have an underscore. Okay, so this is the regular expression we're gonna play around with. This one is a little bit fragile actually, like it, it, it will not be okay if you add spaces in between here, uh, and maybe we could play around with that a little bit later. But for the purposes of today, I really wanna focus on how we use regular expressions, not the actual writing of the regular expressions. So, so I think this will work, or at least it would work if I just wanted to verify whether or not my string follows the format that I want. If that's all I wanted, then this is sufficient. It's actually not, I want a little bit more. I wanna parse out the key and the value. And so what I'm going to do is add some parentheses here, and I'm going to add parentheses here around my value. Okay, now the reason for the parentheses is that basically says, hey, this is a piece of this pattern that I actually wanna be able to pull out. I want this to be a kind of a, like think of it as like a sub match within the big pattern match. Okay, so now we have our pattern specified and so this is why I needed three elements up here. This is why I need three matches is because one is going to match the entire thing and then I'm gonna have a match for the key and I'm gonna have a match for the value in my string. Okay, so now let's actually see how this actually works. Let's make it match. So the first thing, this is gonna happen in three stages. First, we are going to compile our regex then we are going to actually execute the regular expression on, on a string that we wanna match. And then we are going to have some cleanup. So just mapping out what I'm gonna do here. So compiling the regex, here we're just gonna say, let's put it in an if statement just so we make sure that it, we know whether it had any errors, but I can use this regcomp or regular expression compile function. And we're gonna pass in the address of our regular expression. We are going to pass in the pattern that we want to match and then any options. In this case, the only option I am going to add in here is reg extended. And that's because I want to support the more modern extended regular expression language Whereas like otherwise you just default to the old style basic one and I mean, it's 2025. So I typically use the extended one, but yeah, you, you do you, however you wanna do it. Now, now if this is successful, it will return zero. So that's why the if statement, if it returns an error, then let's just print out an error here and say regex compile failed and we will return exit failure. Okay, now what this does is it takes my string here, my pattern string, and it compiles it into a format that is gonna be more efficient for actually matching against strings. Okay, now let's come down and execute. The idea here is we're going to call reg exec. Again, we're going to pass in the address of our regular expression. We're gonna pass in the string we wanna parse. So this is gonna be argv1. We are going to pass in the number of matches. So this basically tells you how big the array is and the match array. And then options, which I'll just leave the default options, so we'll just leave it as zero. But there are some different options about like how the matching should occur. In this case, we'll just use the defaults. I also want to come in here and save the return type because it might return an error. So we'll just call that result. So we have an int called result that's going to get the result of this exec operation. Okay, now there are three cases here that we care about, okay? So the first one is what if result is zero? That means that we have a match, okay? So I'm just gonna print f match for now. Now, if that's not the case, then there's also the possibility that, and we should check if result is equal to reg no match, okay? So what this means is there's no error, but it didn't match, okay? So let's just print out no match here. And then if it was anything else, then we actually had an error, right? Something went wrong with our regular expression and we probably need to look into that, see what happened. So let's just print out this that reg exec failed 
and we'll again return exit failure. Okay, and then the final thing down here is this cleanup phase. So because this compilation process, when you compile a regex, you might actually be allocating memory. So we need to come down here and good practice to just call reg free and pass in the address of our regular expression. Okay, so this will free any resources that were allocated when we compiled the regular expression. So now at this point, we should have a functional example. Let's come in here and just make sure it compiles still yes it does okay so now let's just make sure that it's working if I come in here and say let's run example so we of course no arguments we got a problem if I just say Jacob it says okay that did not match if I say name equals Jacob then it's saying match okay so it is recognizing this pattern that I specified like I mentioned before uh, if I decided so like I could do this and that's fine but if I add a space in here it's not going to recognize it we would have to update our pattern to allow for spaces in there yeah so we can validate that our text is in the format we want but we also wanted to see what it actually matched the these sub matches that we put the parentheses around up here you know our key and our value so let's go back in here and see what it actually matched for us okay so for this I'm gonna come into here so yes we're gonna print out match and let's add a for loop that goes through our match array so i is less than num matches i plus plus Okay, so we're basically gonna go through each entry in our match array. So for each match, I want to go through and we're gonna print out information about the match. So let's start with match percent %d. We're gonna print out the number of the match just so you can tell like which one corresponds to which. And we'll put i right there and a new line and then I'm, but I'm gonna add some more information about what was actually matched in here. Now the reg match t, this, this uh, regular expression match type here, does not store the actual string that was matched. Instead, it just stores the offsets, the beginning and the end offset in the string where the match occurred. So because we don't have a regular string that's gonna be properly null terminated, we can't just come in here and put a uh, percent %s like I would like to. So instead, what we need to add is an asteri a dot and an asterisk. What this means is that we are going to specifically tell printf how many bytes we want to print. And then I also want after here to print out the actual offsets just so you can see those. So we will say print out, uh, yeah, so there, I think size underscore t's or something like that. So they're long, long. So we, we need to want to make sure we give them enough space. And then, okay, so let's add some more variables here. So for this first string here, what we're going to need to specify is first, we need to specify the length, the number of bytes we're printing. And so for this, we need uh, the match. So and let's just put this down here. So the ith match, and we want the end offset minus the initial offset, the start offset. Okay, so this is gonna give us the number of bytes that we actually wanted to print out. Then let's get the actual string itself. So that's just gonna be argv1. And we're gonna add the start offset to this. So what this is doing is it's just saying, hey, print out that string we were parsing, only start where, we, where the match begins, okay? And then finally, we're going to have our two, uh, our two uh, offsets. So match i dot, so the start offset and the ith end offset. Okay, so that should be the information we want. Come down here and compile. Okay, wait, um, oh right, because I'm subtracting two long longs here, this is not the right type. So we need to come in here and cast that to be an int. Okay, good, now we're good. Now if we come down here and we uh, run our code just like we did before, and we run it like this, you can see, let me pull this up a little. So you can see, the like I mentioned before, the first match is the whole match. So that gets the whole string, the whole thing that it picked out. So going from zero to 10. And then the first match here, or match one is the key, this first thing in parentheses, so that's name. And then Jacob is the value. So yeah, so that's really convenient. I didn't have to write my own parser. I didn't have to write code to go through the string looking for an equal sign. I just had to describe a pattern. So I just described the pattern I wanted here. And as long as it fits the regular expression language, then I can just let regexec do the parsing for me. Now, this is a really simple case. You can do all sorts of fancy stuff with regular expressions, uh, including like validating email addresses or checking to make sure that a password doesn't have any invalid characters. Regular expressions have a lot of different uses and they can make your life a lot easier. So try it out. I hope it's helpful in a future project and I'll see you in the next one.